guys and welcome back to my youtube channel my name is faith and today we're going to be checking out a very interesting video titled she's an absolute moron douglas murray slams a cnn anchor for racist hatred if you're new to my youtube channel you're highly welcome please do subscribe give this video a massive thumbs up comment share and everything good and without further ado let's just dive right into this video Joining me now is Douglas Murray, Associate Editor of The Spectator and the best-selling author of The War on the West. Douglas, we've seen an outpouring of grief and gratitude after the Queen's death, but also it's revealed just how twisted and divorced from reality some leftist publications have become, none more so than The New York Times. Uh, you've written about the paper's hostility against Britain. What's driving the type of... Uh, coverage we've been seeing from the New York Times? Well, I'm afraid that the uh, New York Times, I've written about this quite a number of times in recent years, since 2016 has just had an unbelievable animus against Great Britain. It seems not to have been able to forgive the populace for the democratic vote uh, that meant that we voted for Brexit. And the paper, which used to be the paper of record in the United States and used to be a very highly regarded publication, made an incredibly frivolous set of assumptions. It, it assumed that Brexit was the same thing as Donald Trump. It assumed that Brexit was somehow against the international liberal ideas of the New York Times. And so for the last six years, it's run a campaign of defamation, slander and libel against the United Kingdom. And a quite incredible campaign. I've documented it. It's just sometimes it's just ludicrous, like its culinary section will claim that people in Britain are basically still living on gruel and mutton. Um, uh, sometimes, <laughs> they get basic, sometimes they get just basic facts wrong, or they just they just get a rent a, a gob left winger to say, for instance, that Britain's a racist country. Usually, by the way, uh, um, an ethnic minority British person who 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 claims that Britain is racist yet weirdly is still in it. Um, and then this week, uh, I think the paper hit what is just a new low, even for it. Uh, within hours of the news of the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, the newspaper decided to immediately run um, an incredibly hostile piece by a left-wing non-entity academic uh, talking about colonialism, empire, and the crimes of colonialism, and that Elizabeth II had much to answer for, and, and, and this sort of thing. They, they, they didn't even leave it 24 hours uh, before doing this. And we've seen in the days since other left-wing media join in, CNN, MSNBC, they've all, they've all decided to display not just animus against the Crown and against Great Britain and the Commonwealth, they've also decided to dis display their extraordinary ignorance of history. I mean, they seem to believe that, for instance, Elizabeth II oversaw the empire. They seem to believe the British royal family made its wealth from colonialism. They seem to think that, that, that the colonial era was so terrible that the Commonwealth countries must have been strong-armed into joining the Commonwealth. They've totally ignored the fact, of course, that every Commonwealth Commonwealth countries' leadership, quite understandably, has been expressing their mourning and grief for the loss of Elizabeth II. And why would that be if she was such a tyrannical ruler? Only because that's in the head of these very twisted, spiteful, hateful people like the New York Times. It's quite amazing to watch and very disturbing because it's a reminder, if I can say so, that, you know, institutions like the New York Times used to be great institutions and they've been destroyed by hatred. And that's the exact opposite of what Queen Elizabeth showed in her own lifetime, which is that you build institutions with love, with love and loyalty. Uh, and that's something that the CNN, MSNBC, The New York Times, they, they wouldn't understand the language we were speaking in there. No, and it's not just the hate. As you said, it's the historical ignorance, which is uh, astonishing, particularly when it comes from people you think <laughs> would have a grasp of history. They're academics, they're members of the media, the working media. Um, you mentioned some of the other outlets, CNN, uh, the view on the ABC. Let's just have a look at some of these examples. You know, this idea of how the royal family, how this family grapples with its history and legacy of colonialism, of 
slavery, of the potential paying of reparations is a really important one. And I think that King Charles understands that his job is, yes, as a monarch, but he's also an anchor for this Commonwealth. She said, uh, a thieving, raping, genocidal empire is finally dying. May her pain be excruciating. It was a thieving, raping, genocidal um, but I think empire. We, I'm lost uh, for we, words. Uh, Step in. First of all, if the British Empire had been genocidal, the people in question wouldn't be alive. They wouldn't be speaking. If the British Empire had been a genocidal empire, it would have tried to kill all of the people under its rule. It did no such thing. There wouldn't be any people in the countries that were under British rule if the British, if the British Empire had been genocidal. Genocidal is the intent to wipe out an entire people. The British Empire never tried to do that anywhere. That's the first thing. The second thing is that absolute moron we just saw first from CNN talking about reparations. She has no idea in her own her own racist hatred, that Britain paid reparations 250 years ago. We paid reparations throughout the 19th century. We paid reparations for slavery by, by abolishing it under George III and then policing the high seas to ensure that slavery not only was outlawed across the, across the British uh, territories, but was outlawed across the high seas. We paid higher goods in Britain throughout the 19th century, higher prices in goods, because because we wouldn't deal in slaving countries such as the United States of America. And so when people talk about reparations today, it demonstrates not just their own basically give me cash mentality, which is all, all that you see here, but also the incredible ignorance. They don't know that Britain paid down any moral and financial debt it ever had 200 years ago under very distant predecessors, as predecessors of Queen Elizabeth II. And these people are not just money, uh, tin rattling money makers. They're also just constantly showing their unbelievable ignorance of everything that happened before the day they were born. Woo, guys, that was one interesting briefing by Douglas Murray. Wow, wow, wow. He really, really threw absolute good points over there. Like, you shouldn't just come out and speak what you do not know without knowing the facts like it doesn't even make sense it's just baseless rumors baseless gossips and all that if you want to talk about something you need to pick the facts make sure that you're making true points and like you're really really sure of the information you're letting out out there not just bringing out whatever you think or whatever you thought and then post it out there like trying to sabotage people or sabotage a country or something like that Honestly, I'm really I'm short of words on what to say here, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section about what the absolute moron said about British being a genocidal country. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, you're absolutely welcome. Please do subscribe, give this video a massive thumbs up, comment, share, and everything good, and I'll be seeing you in my next video. Bye for now.